Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the next lecture video for uh, we're going to start Photoshop this week. Um, we for those of you that are still kind of catching up on your illustrator assignments, uh, go ahead and finish those up. Um, I have uh, submitted grades uh, for those uh, assignments that have been submitted. If you don't have a grade for something, it's because they don't have it uh, uploaded to Canvas. If any is still having any issues with Illustrator, please let me know. Um, but we do need to start moving into Illust uh, Photoshop because we're almost uh, halfway through the semester uh, at this point. Um, spring break is in uh, two weeks or a week. It starts the, the seventh. So that usually marks the halfway point of the semester. Um, so again, for those of you that are still having any issues or problems with um, Illustrator, please let me know. I can set up a separate Zoom meeting with any of you if you need it. Um, just let me know, uh, email me either through Gmail or through Canvas and let me know if you're having any issues. Um, but we do need to move on to Photoshop. Um, we're about a week behind, but that's fine. We'll get caught up um, with the assignments. Um, so Photoshop is the uh, photo manipulation, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> application. Um, you can color correct in there. You can um, uh, compo make composite images, combine images together. Um, uh, fix, like I said, fix images. If you have like a torn image or a, a damaged image, you can fix that. And that's one of the assignments that we'll be doing as well um, in, in two weeks um, or after spring break, we're, we're gonna be doing that. Um, so I think Photoshop is, is probably gonna be a lot more fun for most of you. Illustrator can be a little challenging, you know, learning the pen tool and that kind of thing. But I think Photoshop will be a lot more, um, probably be a little easier for you to pick up uh, and learn. Um, we have some fun assignments in, Illust in Photoshop, I should say, that we're gonna be working on. Um, today, I'm gonna go over a little bit about the basics of Photoshop, what you can do in it, um, mostly the tools, go over some of the tools. Um, and then we are going to do uh, colorized line art, which is kind of like coloring a, uh, uh, in a coloring book, but we're gonna do it on the computer with Photoshop, okay? So I have set up this with the new module, uh, module four, uh, colorized line art. So this, this is just gonna be an overview of the assignment here. And then, um, uh, some of the files that you can uh, read with more information about Photoshop that I'll be referencing back and forth uh, throughout the next couple of weeks with Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to show you those and then I'm going to show you the um, um, assignment, what you're going to be doing. And then the next video that I post, I'll be going over some of the uh, aspects of Photoshop and um, going over how to do the, the assignment as well. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with the Photoshop introduction. Um, these are some PDFs, uh, files that came from the Adobe website. Um, this particular first one here is from 2018, but a lot of the information that is in there is still relevant to, um, the new version of Photoshop. Um, you know, the, the concepts and everything of Photoshop haven't really changed over the years, just the tools and maybe the way things are done in the application. Um, but Photoshop's main purpose hasn't changed uh, much over the years. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly go over some of these PDFs here. <clears throat> and if you have any issues downloading them or viewing them, any of the files, please let me know. Um, cause I did transfer them from last semester and they might not, the links might not have worked properly. Okay. So again, this is just an overview file, um, talking about what, 
uh, Photoshop is used for creating, enhancing photographs, illustrations, and 3D artwork. Uh, with Photoshop, you can compose, edit, and manipulate images across multiple layers using mass, transparency, and color spaces. Okay, so um, again, just read over this, just explains uh, a few things about Photoshop. Um, the workspace, which is pretty much the same across any of the applications, the start screen, um, it's pretty much the same. Uh, getting to know Photoshop, there is a learn learning tab in there where you can access other videos um, and things to watch for uh, more information. The step-by-step -step tutorials, which I have a link on there as well, where you can uh, go to the Adobe website and um, access some of the tutorials that are on there if you'd like to work along with those. Um, talking about the tools, the work area, uh, workspace options, how to reset your workspace. Uh, what else is here? Uh, Photoshop search, how to search for things, uh, whether it be layers or Photoshop uh, images, or I mean, uh, stock images and that kind of thing, opening a file. And again, some of this is, is um, the same across all uh, applications. Uh, it talks about the tool panel. And I'm gonna go over a couple of the tools today, uh, just briefly. Um, but as we're working on the assignments, you'll get used to using some of the other tools. Um, again, it just keeps talking about different tools. And then that's the, it. It doesn't go into depth, a, a lot of uh, depth about um, the tools, but just some basic stuff. Okay, so that's that, that um, PDF. Um, the next one that I want you to... Um, read over as well is talks about the difference between bitmap and vector images so bitmap is uh, photoshop images that has to do with pixels vector images is what we were doing in illustrator okay so uh, bitmap bitmap images use a rectangular grid of picture elements or pixels so every image in photoshop is made up of individual squares of colors so um, I'll open up an image when I get to Photoshop and show you that how each of the little pixels has a different color to it. And that when then you zoom out of the image, that represents the entire image um, that you see. Okay, bitmap images are resolution independent. That means the size and quality of the image depends on the number of pixels per inch in the image. So the more pixels you have in an image, the better quality you're gonna have. Um, the less pixels you have in the image, the, the lower the quality, okay? Um, vector images, what we were doing in, in Illustrator, uh, create pain crisp edges, excuse me, and lose no detail when resized. So you create something in Illustrator, say the size of a postage stamp, and you decide that you wanna increase it later, to the size of a billboard, it will increase with uh, no loss of quality. But if you try doing that same thing in uh, Photoshop, it will lose a lot of quality. It will get pixelated, it will be blurry, um, and it just won't look right if you try to increase something that doesn't have enough pixel information um, to a larger size. Um, from that tinier or smaller size uh, image that you had, okay? So again, go ahead and read over the rest of this. Um, there's two images here that show you the difference. Let me zoom in just a little bit so I can show you. So this image right here, you can see all the individual squares of color. This is what a Photoshop document or Photoshop image would look like when the magnification, when it zoomed in a lot as opposed to an Illustrator file right here that is just lines and shapes. Um, and the more you uh, zoom in on 
either one of these you'll tell you can tell immediately the difference between a vector graphic and a um, Photoshop or, or bitmapped image. Okay, so um, go ahead and read over that. And then the other one um, that I want you to review as well is how to use painting tools. Now in this first uh, Photoshop assignment, we are gonna be using the paintbrush and we're also gonna be, I'm gonna introduce the concept of layers to you as well, and then uh, blending modes. So this goes over um, different painting tools, the, uh, the brushes, um, how to set your brush options, which I'll go over uh, when I go over the, the first assignment. Um, and then some of the other options, painting with the brush um, gives you a little step-by-step -step here on how to paint with the brush. Um, and I will go over that as well for, with the assignment. Um, talks about how to set the opacity. The opacity is how light or dark the, the, the what your painting will be. Um, there is a pencil tool that works pretty much the same way that the pen, I mean the brush does, but it gives you more like if you're drawing an actual, um, if you wanted to draw something on there, okay? It just talks about that a little bit more. Uh, the mixer brush is another tool. I don't use that as much, but you can see here, um, you can make it look like you're painting with um, watercolors or pastels or any kind of, of um, uh, traditional art style. Um, how to change the brush settings, um, which I won't get too much into this first assignment, but um, you can manipulate the brush to do different things. Um, and again, this just kind of goes through some of the other other uh, brush options, okay? So you can read over this. It does have quite a bit of information. Um, take your time and read over this. And then if you have any questions about anything, just let me know. Um, but I will explain, go into a little bit more detail about the, um, the brushes, okay? So again, read these at your own pace. Um, you can read ahead on some of the other ones if you want to. And then down here at the bottom is the link to the um, Adobe website that will um, go through some of the tutorials. Um, it's taking a little bit longer on my computer. Launch. These are some other videos that you can watch if you want. Uh, there's practice files that you can download and work along with the um, videos as well. And then down here at the bottom of each of these pages, it does have a link to what the next video in the series uh, is, okay? So these are just some additional resources for you to uh, watch if you have any questions um, about anything in Photoshop that I might not have gone over yet, you can view these. And again, if there are any questions about Photoshop or anything, just you know, don't hesitate to, to um, email me or reach out to me and I will get back to you, okay? So those are the um, PDFs that I want you to view. And then at your own leisure, you can watch these, these videos as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Photoshop and um, just do a quick overview of it. Um, and then, sorry, um, then we'll, I'll get into, in the next video, I'll get into the assignment and go over that in a little bit more detail. Okay, all right, so let me switch over to Photoshop. All right, so let me hide this. Okay, so as you can see, this is Photoshop. It, it has um, 
the interface is pretty much the same uh, as Illustrator, the main interface. Um, you all are, when you open the file, open the, sorry, <laughs> when you open up the program, you're going to see uh, this welcome screen. I have open files on my computer already. So that's why you, why you see the recent files down here. Uh, if you have opened Photoshop for the first time, you will not see uh, any of this. It'll just be blank down here. Okay, so you have home, which is your start screen. And I, by the way, I'm using 2021. If you're using 2022, it may look a little bit different, um, but the start screen itself pretty much is the same. So you have home, you have learn. Um, so you can um, go through these tutorials. They are the same videos too that you can access on the Adobe website. Um, if you want to read over these or not read over these, but view these at your own time, you can. Um, and then you have an option for cloud documents if you're saving your files in the cloud, which is Adobe's uh, file system. Um, instead of saving it to your own computer. Uh, and then you have create new and open buttons like you do in, in the Illustrator um, interface as well, okay? Um, so then when you click uh, create new, it brings up the new dialog box. And again, this is similar to the one in Illustrator. Um, you have your recent saved uh, and then different options for whatever type of, of uh, project you're going to be starting. So if you're doing something with photos, something with print, uh, art and illustration, uh, web or mobile. So if you're doing something for the web, whether it be a layout for a website or um, a web ad or a banner ad, uh, you can select the web if you're doing something for mobile. So if it's a, a for different screens, so an iPhone, an iPad, uh, if you're doing something for Android, Android and, and iPad or iPhones have different sizes. Um, and then you're always going to see templates at the bottom. So uh, just depending on what you're trying to do. There may be a template here, here at the bottom that you can use. Uh, and you can see over here on the uh, right side of the window as you cycle through these different um, categories of files that you can create, things are changing over here uh, as well. So the main thing I wanted to show you is when you're in the print tab, Everything is done with inches. And if you move to the photo, or actually it's just said web and mobile, things start changing to pixels. Um, you can create a print document with pixel dimensions as well, but it's usually best to start to leave everything with at inches at this point, okay? Um, but you can always change your um, increments here on the pop down menu, like you could in Illustrator. Um, so if you wanted to switch over to pixels, you can. And again, those pixels are the information. Each square represents a, a specific color in Photoshop. And then all of the pixels together represent the, the image. So the larger the number of pixels you have here, the more quality you're gonna have. And then this number here, the resolution pixels per inch also rep represents how many pixels are going to be in the image per inch of the image, okay? Um, it can get a little confusing as to what pixels, you know, how the measurement for that is, um, but just, Remember, the more pixels numbers, the number of pixels you have in your document, the uh, higher the quality of your your um, your images. Okay. Um, so there are some other options here that you can set up in the the new 
um, file document or file new file dialog box, excuse me. Um, so you can have your width and your height, the orientation of your document, your uh, resolution. And then there's also a pop down menu for color modes. So the um, main three that you would probably be using is grayscale, which means everything would be black and white. RGB is red, green, and blue, and that's anything for the screen. And then CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black would be anything that you are going to uh, would print, whether it's uh, like for that Vista print or any of the places that that make business cards and postcards and that kind of thing. Or if you're sending it out to a print house that does, you know, um, mass quantities of of printing, uh, your stuff would need to be in, in CMYK, okay? So just remember RGB is screen, CMYK is um, for print, anything for print, okay? Um, and then there's some other options here, color profile that has to do with um, uh, screens and also with printing as well. Um, and then, so yeah, the main thing is the width and the height, the resolution, and then your color mode when you're creating um, your new document, okay? So you can have any size document you want, um, and then whatever resolution you want, but usually the main, the main resolutions are 72 for, um, for web, uh, 150 was, would be good enough for like your inkjet printers at home. And then 300 would be for um, printing press type things where you're sending it out uh, and you're getting um, mass quantities of your stuff printed. That's what a, a print house would do, okay? Um, yeah, that's kind of it on that window. Let me go ahead and click create. And then when you open up, uh, when your document opens up, this is uh, what you're going to see for your interface of Photoshop. So your tools are going to be over here on the left hand side. And you can see as I'm hovering over the tools, a little um, a graphic will appear giving you uh, you know, a couple, like a one sentence um, description of what the tool is. Sorry, <laughs> couldn't think of the word. Um, and then it'll give you a little animation of what it does. And then it'll give you also the keyboard shortcut for um, each of those tools. And then a link to click on and it will, um, uh, allow or go learn more link where you can, it'll take you to the Adobe website uh, and you can learn more specifically about that, that tool, okay? And then over on the right-hand side, you will see your panels. Um, you have your color panel, your swatches, um, gradients, patterns. So with the color panel, you have the spectrum of the color from white to the full color and then from the full color down to um, black so anywhere in between there for that particular color and then you also have the spectrum um, slider here where you can change the color itself uh, swatches is these are the um, swatches that were recently used. So I have, I have colored stuff and used different swatches and that's where they appear. And then you have um, individual groups of swatches. So you have RGB, CMYK, um, grayscale, pastel, and so on. Okay, so it groups it by different categories. 
and then you just click on one of the colors and it will load it into your um, foreground color over here. And when I get into the colorized line art uh, <clears throat> assignment, I will explain that a little bit more. Okay, so there's your color panel, your swatches, um, you have gradients as well. So you know, if you're coloring something <clears throat> and you want to have it kind of to go from light to dark or from one color to the next that's what um, a gradient is um, you have your properties panel as well here like you do in uh, illustrator it has a little bit different options than the illustrator one does um, but it shows you what your canvas size is information about your canvas um, rulers guides uh, some quick actions. So if you need to see what your image size is, you can click on that button. Uh, and this is your image size uh, dialog box. And again, it tells you the information about the, the document you created. It is the same uh, dimensions and everything that you put in the new uh, New document dialog box. When you first click that button, it gives you that same information. Um, you can change the image size here, or just you know, so you remember what the image size is in this dialog box. Okay. Um, so again, some other quick actions, and then this uh, dialog box or panel down here is your layers. So kind of think of layers as um, pieces of paper in a book. Um, so the more things you put on the page, uh, you can layer them on top of each other. So, you know, it's part, part, some part of the image is hidden by the other image, um, but just think of it as pieces of paper or uh, uh, what's it called? Um, transparency, like you can see through it. So, you know, right now there is nothing on this page, but as you put things on top of it, parts of your image will be hidden by things that are on top of it. Okay. And I'll explain that a little bit more too when I get into the um, actual assignment today, um, how that works a little bit better. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to give you an overview of the, the uh, interface right now. Um, as we're working on the assignments, I'll go over some more of the other tools. Uh, I think it's best for me just to concentrate right now on one tool at a time um, that you're going to be using or the two tools that you may be using. And that way you get familiar with those tools. <clears throat> excuse me, before I move on to, to the next tool. Okay. So this was just a brief overview of um, a Photoshop. And as we get into it more, um, you know, I'll go over more aspects of it. But like I said, I just want to concentrate on one, one or two tools and one panel or one or two panels right now so that you can get those, um, concentrate on those and get those two, two or three aspects down before I move on to more, um, not necessarily complicated, but more, more uh, the, the, uh, the concepts in Photoshop that take a little bit more steps than, than, um, than this one is going to. Okay. So uh, this concludes the Photoshop introduction. Um, I'm going to record the next one that goes over the actual assignment and the instructions that we're going to be working on this week. Um, so again, if you have any questions about anything I went over in this video, uh, let me know. Um, either through email or um, through Canvas. And I'll also set up a Photoshop discussion um, board on the module as well. So if you have any questions, you can ask me there too, okay? All right, so I will be back in a few minutes with the next video.